up, get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid of anxiety in head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. Maurice Bernard, state of mind. Okay, state of mind. Um, who, who do I have today? I, you know, what's funny, first of all, hit that little button right here. <laughs> To subscribe, we gotta grab it. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get to a million, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, today I'll do it for you. <laughs> All right, uh, who I have today is somebody who he doesn't know, but oh. I'm a big fan of his, <laughs> and I'm not joking. Yeah, I'm there's right. only, yeah, we're gonna talk about that as we go on. There was a there, there's been a few soap actors that I've been fans of, and he's one of them. He uh, he was on As the World Turns. Don't I don't need to say his Damn. character name. <laughs> yeah, not slanding, but you probably know him best as. Say the word. Should I? <laughs> I can't. I, I'm so excited. Hold on. <laughs> so funny. Bo Brady, Peter Reckel. How you doing, man? I could. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is a, this is. <laughs> We got to tell him, though, that the two of us have been doing the same thing for how long? How long have you been doing it? 40 years. Oh. I just had my 40th year anniversary. Oh. I, well, I was on the show for 30 years. In the last 10 years, I've been a dad. And, yeah. Uh, but I did this, you know, came back when they went to Peacock and stuff and had a little 20 shows or something like that, which was fun. Get back in the game, and it was just so different. It's different. Yeah, we'll yeah, talk yeah, about that. But like, where where are you living now? Anchorage, Anchorage. And you, I know you got a big big ass farm there, and you just do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, I'll show you pictures after with the the moose and the bear <laughs> and the stuff in our front yard. Damn. Yeah, we moved there because I'll jump right into it. We moved there because my uh, we went to a few places before we arrived in Alaska. But the big place, <laughs> I tell people, uh, we go places that people want to visit. We lived in New Zealand for five years. Wait a minute. And um, when we arrived there, oh, when I say this, it, it sometimes hurts people's feelings. And it's just a fact. When we arrived there about five days after Trump was elected, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden residency just became impossible especially for really? artists. I mean, if you're a doctor or whatever, yeah, you're, yeah, then, yeah. you're in. Yeah. Um, and we tried to get residency, but it didn't work out. And my, my wife, Kelly, went back to work or back to school because she always wanted to go to school, and she had reason to and became a documentary filmmaker. Are you serious? Yeah. I love documentaries. Yeah, and she did a documentary for New Zealand that they used to represent New Zealand. It was about Tokelau, which is these small atolls in the ocean that are part of New Zealand and how they're dealing with uh, climate change and the ocean's rising and their islands are disappearing. And then her, her master's was, she's started one, a documentary about uh, the indigenous peoples up in Alaska because that's where she grew up. And um, it got to a point where with the pandemic and stuff, we couldn't travel back and forth, you know, and our families are yeah, near yeah. and dear to us. And my mom and dad passed while we were there, and I was just barely able to get back to them. And we just decided, you know what, with the way things are going, we got to move back home. So uh, Kelly grew up in Alaska, so we, we moved to Alaska. Now, I hear New Zealand is beautiful. Oh, my God. It's but what's ma what makes it so beautiful? It's like stepping back in time. No. It is. You know, you go into the bank, there's no triple glass, you know. Yeah. I was there first time, and it's like talking to somebody over a bar, you know, I was talking to the pers cash or person helping me, and an old guy next to me took out $5,000 and put it in his pocket and walked out, and I'm like, what the? And it's just wow. that way. You drop your car off to get it worked on, and you're standing there hoping for a receipt, and you're like, okay, see you next week, <laughs> There's, it's now, what about the beaches? Any beaches? Oh, in? yeah. We, we lived in Wellington, which is the capital, the bottom of the North Island. They, the particular beach right in town, they bring in the sand, but there you have these black sand beaches. Oh, really? I'm a mountain biker, and right out my front door, you had 
world-class mountain bike tracks and they were building them all the time and so it's wow. a destination if you're a mountain biker you know i saw a movie and I, and, I, and it was an incredible movie you probably know it called once were warriors no. peter is it about, was it shot there shot in new zealand yeah. about gangs these oh, gangs so that was that was like 20 years oh ago? yeah yeah oh man what a great movie and so realistic. Oh, wait, I, yes, I do recall it now. Yeah, once were warriors. It was. It, uh, yeah, big the, dudes. Yeah, yeah. About the now, who are those? Uh, is there like gangs there a lot, or how's... Yeah, they're more up in Auckland, which is a you know the big city. Oh, uh, yeah. Down where we were, there were there wasn't many gangs. And great acting in this movie, oh, and yeah. directing. And yeah, I mean, I forgot the name of that movie. Yeah, once once were, warriors. were warriors. Now Alaska. It's just snowing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just we're just now planting the last week I was just now planting my garden because the ground was still frozen. <laughs> so yeah. And but the sun is up now, you know, it gets a little bit dark at night but it doesn't get completely Oh, dark. that's right. Yeah. It's always nighttime or something? No, and right in the summertime it's it's always the sun is always up. Oh, oh, this. and well like in the winter my sense of direction here had was, you know, I'd sit anywhere and I know which way is north, south, and east. Way. Up there, in the in the winter, you'd watch the sun. It, you know, at the lowest, it kind of hit sort of the peak of the horizon, and it, you know, between two and four o'clock in the afternoon, you yeah. kind of see it. And now the sun up, was up and up and up, and now it's it's like back there. So <laughs> it's crazy. what, yeah. Now, what about animals? I love animals and play. Oh, yeah. Cause, yeah. See, I don't fly because I've... Uh, you get long, nervous about flying. Well, I've gotten off two planes. I'm mentally ill and yeah. the whole deal, and I've had panic attacks on planes. So, so I live vicariously through whoever's sitting in that chair when they live in places you know, like you. you. You can go. They You drive up Seattle. Up to oh, Seattle. you can drive there? No. You get on a on a on a ferry, oh. and it pops along the coast. Just you, you think you're in heaven. It's kind of like New Zealand, oh. the, the, with the islands and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. You pop along the coast, and then you just get off in, in Anchorage, and they have all these tours. This summer, apparently, we're gonna have to. Have and as you're going tours. there, you see all this beautiful oh, scenery yeah. and the trains that go there. So you don't have to get on a you know the tube that. The only time I had a panic attack is on on an airplane was when we were all wearing the masks. Yeah. And apparently my body said, you're not getting enough oxygen. And I woke up and I didn't realize it was because of my mask at first. And my heart, it was, it oh, was yeah. a panic attack. Oh, I, yeah. It was scary. Let me tell you, the, the, a lot of times, well, with me, it's when I wake up. Like you just did. Yeah. And it, the problem that, it, although I just flew without my wife. You're going to have to, aren't you, with your little tour? No, the tour, yeah, I may have to, but I went to New York for the first time. I know I've told the story, but there may be some people out there that haven't heard this story. <laughs> um, I flew for the first time without my wife, and it hit me again. The bad, I call it Freddy Krueger. That, give me a name. Does that help? Do you, do you think about Freddy Krueger? You know, I, I don't know if it helps, but I think it may help. <laughs> and it and it, it connects me with the audience. Yeah. So they know when I say Freddy Krueger was there. The, you know, <laughs> oh, okay. And they start saying Freddy Krueger. It's kind of cool. So your wife says, hey, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> it's okay, Dad. <laughs> but I, it it's started hitting. It hit me, and I felt like, you know, what happens in the mind is it's, this will be our mental health talk. Maybe we may talk more later, but what happens is the mind says, get the F off the plane. Get the F off the plane. And yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, I was doing talk shows and stuff. And I'm like, I can't, I can't, but I but it was hitting me hard and your wife's not here to your wife's not here to help you. Your wife's not here. So I used this thing and I it this thing called Comago. And it's like an inhaler. And Peter, oh, calm, uh, calm it go. Okay, like yeah. calm it goes, right? Uh huh. What's in it? It's like a scent. 
like a scent that it feels like a I don't know what kind. So you of, inhale it. Inhale it, uh-huh. and it, you you see a light that tells you when to inhale, when not to inhale, when to inhale. And I think the light distracts you from the thoughts now. You're focusing on something else, yeah. And let me tell you, I I tried everything else. Nothing was working. I'm like almost getting off. I did it for a minute. Did you have your parachute on? <laughs> well, I, we, we, with me, it's right before it takes off. I say, oh, open yeah. the freaking doors now. Yeah, yeah, open yeah. the doors. Gone. It was gone. In a Sweet. S- and it, it was How nice to have a tool. Yeah. Right? Because I don't drink and I don't have oh. pills. And this is, now I have it in my back pocket. Good for you. And I cried like a baby just because that's never happened, man. To, to have something that scares you so much. And then it's gone. And that quick. I Good. Was like, Good. Man. You know, I just want to, I am so proud of you for doing what you're doing here. Um, and you've done it for a couple of years now. Yeah. Give them, letting people know that they're just not alone and that they can talk about this kind of stuff. And, yeah. and all sorts of different Thank you. issues Thank that you. they're having. Especially now. I mean, going through, the, you came out and it, uh, with the pan during the pandemic, and you know it was right that at was the perfect time for people to have a place to go. Hey, did you hear what? Yeah, what he said. And, and, and said I don't tools. know if you know, but during people didn't know that during the pandemic was as close to me not being here anymore. Not making it, yeah. So so all along with a lot, a of lot people. of people, yeah. And still, I think a lot of people now, years later, it's starting to hit them now. For, for whatever reason, it hits you later. And, uh, but I think the good thing about the pandemic is people who never, you know, like now we're going to get all this mental health talk, which is great. I love it. So now we can just, we'll through we can just stuff. cope. <laughs> we can just, you know. Um, w- w- the beauty of it is that people, because it's an invisible illness. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're really, you know, yeah, real. Yeah. with me, it didn't probably wasn't invisible during the pandemic because I was like, yeah. <laughs> You know, but I've gone to work. Nobody, I'm, I have anxiety. Oh, it's all right. I go to sleep. You know, nobody, <laughs> no, fine. nobody sees it. But yeah, for yeah. the first time, I think the pandemic, people who had that attitude or people for the first time felt what it's like to have a panic attack. And they probably said, oh, this is it. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, right. And that's the beauty of the pandemic. And the curse is the, a lot of suicides, right? Oh, shit. That's one thing Kelly's finding out up in uh, with with her documentary is that the indigenous peoples are you know they live along the coast most of them because their lifeline is uh, fishing and you know the seals and stuff and oh, you know, yeah. and their homes are with the ice is just disappearing and their home they're they're having yeah. to move their villages away and and. We're, she just told me something um, a couple of days. She reads once she puts, she's editing her it now, and she reads me these things every now and then. And um, uh, when v- villages just completely disappear, it's like, what are you going to do? What this, is, this is, this, these are you know, thousands of years old, and you're having to pack up and move your village um because how do you pack up and move your village exactly and um it's really cool because uh there are certain uh, people who are developing these pods basically so that they you uh. know, for, so that they can move um it's just in Incredible that's what that's they're going through. That's sad, very sad. So the the mental illness up there. She's she's working to try to you know bring. What do they do with, men, with the mental illness out there? It's it's, it's yeah. pretty much non-existent. So the the suicide rates and stuff like that are just crazy. Oh um, my! So she's trying to bring some, you know bring some. Atta- you know what? We're going to be back in September. Yes, we'll have you her. Sit down and talk with you. I'd love to talk. I was just going to tell you. Yeah. I want to talk to her. Yeah, she's got some incredible news. Have her. Yeah, let's do it. And and that's, um, well, we'll jump right into this. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen any of my stuff over the 40 years that I've been around, um, but I've always been, a, you know, concerned about our environment. Yeah, and yeah. Riding my bike and doing things that... Putting solar panels on my house. Anything you can do to help 
and obviously it's come you know people are it's at a we're kind of looking like we're past the turning point here yeah yeah if you really pay attention and and especially after my daughter was born i went what's the world going to be like for her? Yeah. And, you know, to see um, see her upset about anything, you know, it's yeah, just really yeah. hard when, to be a parent sometimes when you see your, your child upset, you know. It could be upset about anything, stub or toe or anything, but then you think about, you know, what's this world going to be like in yeah. 10 years? 20 years when she's an adult and so it kind of turned up the screws when you know when we had a child that we really got to get the message out there that you know everybody has to start doing something and it's funny I was just on my Twitter um, sitting out there because I'm always early for things and I look this thing came up um, and it's just a picture on uh how the uh what you eat you know your food yeah, yeah and the the carbon footprint of food and red meat this is just a bunch of other stuff but look at red meat goes all the way across the where you know chicken is that you shouldn't eat yeah, red meat yeah. red meat is just uh, well i have high cholesterol man like bad cholesterol right now and people ask me, what can I do? And, you know, I say, you know, just start l looking on your your social media and stuff because these little things. <laughs> I'm with you. These little things, once you say, okay, this is what I'm interested in, they start feeding you. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. It's a huge problem. Um, but there's know, a good and bad ab about that. Yeah. Right? But you can, uh, you know, Polarizes like. Polarizes people, but something but like that. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, the, the stuff will come to you. But, and. I mean, they uh, a couple of last week somebody said on here, if everybody turned, this is never going to happen. Obviously, uh, became vegans, that would fix our climate issues because the carbon footprint of of meat is just incredible. So I just try to ask people once, twice a week, just not eat meat at you know, especially yeah, red yeah. meat. You know, well it now make a huge difference. I know there's a lot of fat, and the fat's not good for my. You know, there's. I just yeah, found there's out there's these people that are on uh, what is that new diet a couple years ago where all they do is eat red meat. Oh, what is it called? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't. I didn't do it or anything because I was just like what? and bacon and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How can that be good for you? Oh, you get skinny, but your heart. And is so good. you're a vegetarian or no? Um, oh, I've been a vegetarian. I haven't eaten red meat and. So you eat chicken? Yeah, chicken oh. and fish. And, uh, but I, I would say three days a week I'm a vegan. Wow. No, vegetarian. And maybe one day a week I'm a vegan. What's the <laughs> difference, vegetarian and vegan? Uh, you, you can eat chicken and meat. Uh, oh. You know. Pescatarian, is that a fish? Oh, that, that, that's yeah, a fish you know, thing, yeah. Different, yeah. But just get red meat. It's, if you can get it out of your diet, it's good. I'm thinking I might have to now. <laughs> That's um, the purpose of this, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, and where you grew up? Where'd you grow up in uh, Michigan? Michigan, right, yeah. right, right, right. How was that? That's just Michigan's Michigan. <laughs> yeah, Middle America. You know, <laughs> when I when I went off to I went to Boston to Boston Conservatory of Music, and my dad was like. Oh, my parents were all, I'm one of six, the second of six, and uh, he was <laughs> going to do what? <laughs> but he was supportive. He said, I'll pay your tuition, what it would cost if you went to school here, and you make it make up the rest. And I was like, oh, okay. But um, speaking of mental illness, uh, I learned to self-medicate, I guess I was 10 no. Dramatic pause. My medication was running. I would just go run. I, I disappeared for an hour. You know, and really? back then. Yeah, back then, you know. Not, no one would really notice. I'd go run. And that, and I didn't even notice, no, it was my, I was self-medicating until, you know, 
But what later it, I learned, oh, physical exercise, that is a, that, a way to... That's to, a big way, yeah. yeah. But what were you self-medicating? What, what? Anxiety, I guess. Oh, you, you know, 10? Just, yeah, what? You were 10? Oh, yeah. You, wow. You're in a... I never had... I was... I was the the all American boy. I saw mom sick I'm the second just get overwhelmed. I mean and she did everything when I was in grade school. She made our clothes. We had a huge garden. We right. we uh, we canned things. We had a cow. We made our own <laughs> butter. We traded milk for eggs with the f- the folks down the street, you know, it was but I, you know, when you have six kids, you get overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with one, and I don't know how she did it, but I, I apparently noticed she was overwhelmed, and so I took on. Let me, I gotta help mom. Oh, yeah. and like my baby sisters, two youngest are are my sisters, and you know, the youngest one, I changed her diapers, and you know, yeah. and just took, and I and I guess I took on some of her. God, if, and the only time I really had an explosion was um, I was just we. My dad got a new job. We lived in the lower part of Michigan for that for my grade school years, and my dad got a new job in the Upper Peninsula, right on Lake Superior. And it was like, boom, we had to move. I had a horse at the time, Tiger, and that was one of my. Yeah. He, I just loved him and. And boom, he's gone. We all pack up and we pile in the car. And Dad's already up there working, and and uh, we're driving. You know, six kids in a station wagon pull, full of stuff, and we cross the Mackinac Bridge. And sometime after that, I just blew up and just was screaming. Mom, pulls over the car, takes me out, and walk, goes for a walk. That's the only time I really, because I was, I was in that. Yeah. And I didn't. But maybe you needed to blow up. Oh yeah, obviously. And uh, but you know, even now, um, when Kelly and I first got together, and because uh, I would ride my mountain bike every weekend, it, uh, as well as riding back and forth to work and whenever I could. That's your release. Yeah. And Kelly would say, um, "Yeah, well, this weekend, can you?" D- uh, and then she <laughs> learned what it was for me, and. I get a bit cranky and <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, never mind. Go, Just go, for go, your, go, go for your yeah. ride. And you know, my f- that was my forced bathing. But um, you know, uh, now that we're into talking about exercise, um, it is important. Of course, it's important, important. mentally. Uh, for me, I w- but here's the weird thing. Somebody just asked me yesterday. I was boxing for twenty five years, and I I noticed that. After I'd get in a ring and box with someone, my hands would shake. And and then they start shaking even at work and at acting. And I'm like, then the pandemic hit. I stopped boxing. Mm-hmm. And my hands don't shake anymore. So I believe, although I box, I hit bags. I believe when there's somebody in front of you that's going to hit you, the stress level is too much for me. Maybe not for you. <laughs> maybe for you too. <laughs> but not for me. It was like, I think I was doing it twice a week. And that stress is my hands, and now my hands don't shake. Yeah. So I haven't been in the ring. Almost like, I don't want this to come back. I think if I did it once or twice a month, it would be good for me, yeah. but not too much. Yeah, I did. When I first moved after As the World Turns in New York and moved out here, um, I got into martial arts. And I, th- I kind of, there were a couple of things that happened. Uh, what kind of martial art? Taekwondo. That's what I did. Yeah. And um, Get up. Let's, let's fight right yeah. now. Come on. Oh, but it's been forever since I've done it. Me too. I man. pull a groin. I know or you, we can't stretch anymore, right? You used to be able to. I used to be able to do s- splits. I not never got to splits. No. Oh, I did Chinese splits. Oh, so you got your foot. Yes. Oh, I could do that, but now it's. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, but I that uh, the particular we focused a lot on mental the mental part of it. Like I remember my uh, uh, sensei took me for a drive in his car, and he said, "Close your eyes." You know, and we did some different things with, what do you feel, what do you feel? And then he stopped someplace and he says, in front of us, what do you feel? And I was like, huh, just a little bit. I don't know, it's just a lot of anger. And he said, open your eyes up. And it was a different dojo and people were fighting in there and they had a whole different system. Oh, really? System of uh, That's you know, cool. training. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were all, they were yeah, all. yeah. And ours was kind of, you know, <laughs> so... Uh, but that focus I learned, I think right. it helped me so much oh, yeah. when I, for my auditions and stuff yeah. and uh, come in, you know, for auditions, I just always sucked. I, me too. I, w I had was too much nerves. Terrible. I had too much nerves. And but one day I'd be great. The next three times I wouldn't be that yeah. good. And then I'd be great again and then not that good for about three times. But, by, because, but okay, let me ask you, like I ask a lot of people, do you care what people think? To a certain oh. extent. That's what changed. Ah, what changed? I'll go back. Um, when uh. I was in New York, I took an acting class. Oh, shit. Name's out of my head. But this, this, uh, this teacher was just amazing. He, I remember I did a monologue, and so I'm standing by myself on the stage, and, he, and I finished. And there was just silence for like two minutes. And the class is sitting there, and he's staring at me like you're staring at me. Yeah. And I, and he goes, "What are you feeling now?" And I just wept. And he said, "What's the character you're playing in your life?" And this is something that I think everybody should figure out. Right. Right. What's the character you're playing in your life? That's a pretty, pretty damn good thing, thing to say. And I was like, I'm the all American boy. I care about, you know, I care about what everybody thinks. You know, I want to be the good mm. boy. I want to do the right thing. You look at Eric Hollister that I played on As the World Turns. That's who I was. Look at this character I was playing yeah. once I came out here. I was like an 18-year-old, um, even though I was 28 yeah. when I started Days of Our Lives. Bo Brady was not the all-American boy. Wow. And that was, a, that was a huge step, not just... When you can let go of what people think, yeah. you fly like a bird. I, I look at some of the stuff, you know, because somebody put stuff, you know, clips of those old days on Twitter, and I go... Who the heck is that smart ass? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like, I didn't, I didn't give a shit for anything. You know? So you didn't give a shit early, I get, and then later you gave it, or you just you didn't? now? Yeah, now you don't? Oh, well, w when I start after that moment in New York, and it, I moved out here. Right. You know, poor poor directors, you know, they're they're used to... You do a scene, the actor goes, eh, is that okay? Oh, you were that guy. Uh, that's I was the guy who went, I finished the scene, okay, I'm off, and I'm on to my next <laughs> I didn't. Wow, so you learned that early, Peter. I was 28. I was that's 28. early. Yeah. I learned it at 58. Oh, okay, I learned it early. I mean, I could still <laughs> act and stuff, but it's, it's, it's intense, nervous. But that's what apparently what people loved, huh? Because you were, yeah, <laughs> I get it. I, but my life it is worked for you. <laughs> All that intensity. There's something going on. Because I used it right, but my life suffered. Oh yeah. Whereas now, it it even moves me because I don't have to have that baggage, okay. and I can just feel free. Yeah. But it took a long time. You got it at 28. You you obviously got your your emotions are right of there. Of course. Oh, yeah, oh I got them all right here now. Yeah. Now, it, it, but but it's beautiful that I can feel joy for the first time. What? Do, when your kids were born, did that change a lot for you? No, man. When my daughter was born, I was pretty. Sorry, I hate to say that. I'm gonna people are gonna be like, oh, that's. I was not pretty cool. open, you know, beforehand. But th then my daughter was born. I just oh, I watch a, a McDonald's commercial and I'm weeping. That's <laughs> a that's a great question, Peter. Because, man, you got me thinking a little bit here. 
when my, what, what's made me, ah, oh, fuck. This is, now I'm going to start getting There you go. <laughs> what's, what's made me really emotional in the last three years, let's say, is just overcoming hell and a fear. When you overcome that fear, then you thrive. It's only been three years since you oh, yeah, not cared what people thought. Yes. And I'm not 100%. I'm about 90. Oh, it takes I'm, a I'm, while. Yeah. yeah. But I if I had what you had at 28, I'd have been like, shh. I was fortunate that I had this this character that, I mean, it wasn't me in my, my life. I had this character where I could, you know, it was ultimate. I didn't give a shit about anything. Is that Bo Brady? Yeah. And... You had Shelly Curtis when you yeah. were? Me too. Yeah. Because she went from GH yeah, to Yeah, she's my friend. And, and she, sp- she was the producer that... Yeah. Re- she was, she was, she's the reason... Oh, okay. Bo Brady was... I mean, she... Was well, Shelly, you, yeah. if you're watching, I mean... The, she, she was the one who made Bo Brady, who Bo Brady, you know, you know probably the same with you. She saw something and That's she the same thing. pushed it. Her and Wendy Rich, yes. Yeah. Now let me I tell didn't you, have Wendy Rich, uh, but a uh, right. producer who was just as you know. I'm gonna get it. Let's get into. We, we had some great talks here about a lot of different stuff, and I appreciate it. It's fantastic. But let's talk soaps now. Oh, do we have to? <laughs> well, first That's of all, a great thing about this. Listen, we talk about other. First of all, <laughs> I want to tell you a little something. First of all, the reason I've been a fan because I've, I've I'm gonna tell you. At, as a teen, because I didn't care about soap operas at all. I but I got I sick for two weeks. That happened so often. Right, when I was 14, and I watched... How many times have you heard that story? <laughs> a lot. I never watched soaps, but I was in the so, hospital. Exactly. And I saw GH. But as a, as a dude, you know, he's not going to watch soaps, but I did, because it was on TV. And here are the people, because I, I wrote this down, so I don't forget, that, that I was a fan of. How as many a, different soaps did you watch? I really only watched all my children in General Hospital, but I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I was a fan of Bo and Hope, yeah. and I wasn't a fan of Den- Days of Our Lives. I didn't watch it, but you, I watched you guys. And then Patch, ah, he's kind of cool, but he, was yeah. not, but he was a bad dude Steve or whatever. Cool. He's cool, yeah. But you, I was a big fan, and... and Hope, you know, the couple, you guys just yeah, look so did. great together. The acting was so subtle and real. I didn't know about acting then, but I just thought she was very pretty and you were oh, yeah, whatever we you the, were. We had the writing back then. That and then the writing, bad. the whole thing. Yeah. Luke and Laura, Jesse and Angie, Tad, Erica. So you, you watched all these couples. Well, that's what I want. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too. Jenny and... That's that. Pretty much, I don't know any of those people. Except yeah, you do. Luke, Luke and Laura, Jesse. Except Luke and Laura. That's Jesse it. Hubbard. And, and I've only heard about them because Shelly was, you know, that's where she learned what she learned and brought it to me and then brought it you to know you. You know Tad, though. No, I don't oh, know. Oh, Michael I Knight? Watch. Oh, Michael Knight. Yeah, and Erica, you know, yeah. Susan Lucci, right? I don't uh, know but the, that's it. I don't know the character names. I know. Oh, all right, Susan Lucci. Names. Yeah. But that's it. That's all that I like. So. Uh, you know, so I always dug you. Well, you worked opposite Nancy. Who'd you work opposite mostly? Uh, well, in all my children, when I was there, I worked uh, Lauren Holly uh-huh. and Rosa Nevin. Those are my, g- and then on all my ch- on GH, it's uh, Vanessa Marcel, Vanessa, and Tamara Bra. And I had four Carlys. Tamara, Tamara, and Laura Wright. I worked with her a little bit. Yeah, you know, the thing that, what I want to talk to you about, first of all, how was it for you in the heyday, man? Because you were hella famous. And don't tell me you weren't. Okay. Please don't tell me you weren't. <laughs> it, you, was, it was pretty crazy. I, the thing, I, uh, thinking about it, I went into that alternate reality the, of Bo Brady and... I'm dyslexic, mm. so to to memorize those. I remember when I told my mom when I got my job on As the World Turns, she was like, "Oh, great!" <laughs> I heard this hesitancy in her voice. I was like, "What? The, what, what? What, mom?" She said, 
don't you have to memorize a lot of lines? I was like, yeah. And it, it takes me an awful lot to memorize lines. Really? Even now? Oh, especially now after a 10-year hiatus. Um, yeah. Because I don't, it just doesn't stick. If what it, is that? If that it doesn't sli- stick, if it doesn't mean something to me. And um, so I, my homework, I would be doing homework all the time. Um, and actually, it was a good thing. Because for me to, mem- to memorize a line, it had to mean something to me. And f- because it meant something to me, it touched I my get audience. you. I get you, yeah. And, you know, you watch people now and you can see when they haven't done their homework and they're just yeah, yeah. saying, especially on, t- on daytime because you're doing so much material. Yeah, yeah. Especially back in the day. Oh, yeah. Now it's not that, yeah, not that much. You're doing these p- page, page and a half scenes. And, um, so because I just spent so much time in that other world, and I'm kind of a loner anyway, um, just now in my life, I'm, my, my wife is saying, tells me that, oh, you're starting to be the one who, you know, I'm getting to know the neighbors where we live. And, yeah. you know, I come down. And, and a lot of it has to do with just finding out how important friendships are. Um, and, you know, the loss of my mom and dad and then come, coming back home, there was just this sort of, when I first arrived, my best friend that I mountain bike with all the time passed. Then John Aniston and I. Yeah, to what's up with, with him? You got real close to him. Right? How long oh. were you working with him? Oh, uh, I don't know, twenty-five years. He came on, r- like I was on the show maybe twenty-two years, and he came on as my dad, and it was just an intense story because he was a bad guy, and uh, you know I was kind of black sheep of the family, and found out why you know it was just a real intense story because i hated him at first you know oh you did yeah because he was the villain and um you know i wanted to kill him and i I, actually that's how i both found out that uh i was about i pulled a gun on i was about to shoot him and mom mom says ma says don't it's your father oh (laughs) that's i had one of those too So, yeah, it was always intense with him, and he's just such a... But he seems like a sweet man. Oh, just, you know, always with a joke. I'd go to his dressing room and hang out with him. We'd talk, you know, before we ran our stuff. And, and at the beginning, we had those you know, five, six, eight-page yeah. scenes that were just... It's hard. Yeah. I lost him, and the w- reason I was able to come to do this was my acting teacher, Harry Master George, passed away... Um, Month ago, and we had Harry Master. He's famous. Yeah, Harry Master George, and he uh, had his celebration of life, and I had to come down and and see that. I mean, his, I, Josh Taylor, you know him, was, uh, you know, he was sort of my. Man, start talking about Harry. He was sort of my. Um, I had people, you know, you know, people like John and and Francis Reed and. Those old uh, Deidre Hall and um, they were kind of my mentors on the show, you know, actors on the show that just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, were you kind of you weren't a rebel or anything, right? When you first started, the my character. No, you oh. were you were you just a nice guy or were you kind of? No, I was kind I of was, a I you, was, know. you know <laughs> somebody. I, th- I think you can relate to this. If somebody, <laughs> somebody got in the way of of the work. recording this work. I'm with you. It was like, what the hell? That's what I would do. We're working here. But exactly. But only the work. I wasn't yeah. like that with anything else. Yeah. And um, anyway, Josh uh, was sort of in charge of me get, getting me used to my who you are to the public. And, and he saw... You know, you're you go into this thing. You know, you're by yourself. You got an agent, maybe a girlfriend, and suddenly, you know, that's the way it was in the, for you. Things happen, yeah. and everybody in the United States knows who you are and wants to talk to you. You know, and your ego yeah. just goes through yeah, the yeah. roof completely. And Josh saw that happening to me, and he said, he, "You know, he take me by the shoulder. <laughs> He's my big brother." And, he took me to acting class and 
And, uh, you know, and Harry's work really, you know, this yes, is what they, it's yeah. about. Get your focus. And I, uh, you know, kept me from going off the rails. I mean, I try to, I try to, like, I've had a lot of people on here, you know, uh, Tony Gary, Tristan Rogers, everybody, Emma Sanford. And I want to get into those heydays. And they get into it, but, you know, well, I guess, what else can they say? <laughs> it's, you know, it's hard to go outside. It's hard to go anywhere. It's hard to go to eat. Um, there's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of stuff going on. And that's where it kind of ends conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I never really understood that because the drugs and the, you know, going off the rails. That was the 80s, right? Yeah. I started you started in 84. 83. Oh, man, I got that wrong. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I was always, how, what, how do you do that? That's, oh. it, if it, if there was, you know, as on set, if there was something, I didn't do anything to myself. My, my routine yeah. it was no coffee or sugar after, th you know, I learned, okay, yeah. after this time of day, I can't because I got to get my sleep. Right. You know, sleep was always important to me, and I've been waking up at, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning and 5.30 and just to get to work. There, I had this pretty regimented routine, spending this much time on Saturday and, the, you know, my r physical routine. I was, it was myself, too. Nothing got in the way of creating this, alternate reality yeah. which was Bo Bo Brady's life and um, they were they were snorting on the table yeah on the set there was none of that fun. I'm not into that at all but they were in the, you know, the 80s and that's it was normal yeah they'd go party at lunch and come back and act so that was you know that would I, I, I wouldn't drink wine because no. the next day I'd be going to yeah 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 and Nope, can't do that because it took away from the work. The work, yeah. Wow, man. And Christian and I had similar work ethics. She would work her butt off too, and we'd come in and you know every day. You, you know what soaps are like? They're you're, you're repeating the same stuff over and over. Uh, we did this, but yeah, yeah. But when we walked into either you know, mostly her dressing room, it was always this is something new. And we're gonna do make the best of it. And how can we? How can we do that? And then you did not slanding. Yep. Now that's a big deal. W was a huge deal back yeah. then, right? Yeah. And did you audition for that, or you just got offered? Oh no! Oh he, yeah, it wasn't an audition, and we you got started. offered. Yeah. Look at you, Peter. And um, yeah, I just went in and met with them, and uh, it was kind of. Because they 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 said uh, so we want him to be you know English or something and oh. uh, and I I did an and so we ended up Irish so I did an Irish accent oh you did yeah and <laughs> apparently the fans didn't like it <laughs> what yeah <laughs> that, those accents I played Desi Arnaz and the, oh you did that's yeah, right and <laughs> they loved it to death but I hate it yeah. I was like, I can't even watch it. Yeah, and I got to work with Nicola Sheraton. Who yeah. Was, well, that doesn't suck. No. <laughs> um, I think we covered it, man. I don't, I mean, we're having so much fun here. It's like, <laughs> this is like our first. You ran out of notes. <laughs> yeah. It's like our first, lo you know, date. Yeah. And uh, we got to know each other. Well, that's, a, you know, like, a, again, you know, we, we hadn't met each other. But yeah. You, uh, I obviously heard about you and your your intensity <laughs> and not anymore that, and the fact that uh, Shelly was just part That's of your whole I did not know that let me tell you Peter to I, have I'll, that I'll, yeah. I'm going to tell you real quick I know I've said it but I'll say it again when I started General Hospital I had a nervous breakdown my third nervous breakdown I quit the show make a long story short we'll have to get into what happened I didn't want to go back to acting and too difficult, but I, but Wendy and Shelly Curtis. The it was because of the job that. Uh, yeah, I, I hadn't taken my pills for like two years. Oh, and I was out of work, and Why I did you not take your pills. <laughs> What's the matter with you? They were helping you. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just did because I felt good or whatever. But 
But then it got me when I started the show because it was such a this role of darkness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sonny well, was that like, was a character was yeah. pretty dark, yeah. So I quit, had a breakdown, a lot of stuff happened. But then I came back to work and first day, Shelly's and I were in this, the room and I'm crying like a baby. And she I said, I can't I can't remember a line. Not one line I can't remember. She goes, We'll take it page by page. Line by line, word by word, if we have to. So I said, all right, Shelly, and I, I hugged her, and I was crying like a baby. And that walk to go up to the set was like dead man walking, right? <laughs> Going, <laughs> you know? It's like, because I was new. Nobody knew. Not now if this happened, everybody would be like, Marie. Is <laughs> yeah, every, they'd be like, who matter? is this guy? Quit, quit the show? <laughs> now he's Get coming. Shit together. <laughs> so I got up. And I got in front of the camera, and I, I don't know how I did it. You know, I was petrified, but I did it. Turned it on. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. And then each day got a little better, a little better. But that's Shelly She was crazy. just the opposite with me. I was, like, oh. I, was, I was coming in with all these ideas. <laughs> okay, okay. Whoa. That's funny. <laughs> but you know, well, mostly she was trying to convince you know the other producers, yeah, let him go, let him go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, her and Wendy, I mean, I never worked with Wendy. I'd, I went and had a couple of meetings with her. She was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. What she, is she doing now? I think she's uh, producing The Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Peter. Uh, had enough fun for one Yeah, day. let me kiss your ass here. <laughs> oh, for, no. For a little uh, bit. More? <laughs> no. I talk to the camera and tell them what I thought of this interview. Oh, okay. And I have to sit here and listen to it? Yeah. And you're going to love it because <laughs> everybody... Do I have to laugh and... You can do what you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, listen, um, you're going to get me Christine Alfonso here? You, I want her to do State of Mind. Yeah, I haven't sure. asked her, though. Yeah, you, you can ask her for me. Oh, yeah, no, you can. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where that's going. All right. All right, listen. Uh, hey, but I didn't do get any Emmys, so I, don't do, I can't even be in this. Who cares about that? I can't even be in this yeah. room with you. One. I know you've been nominated. I'm don't tell me that. Just once, but... But well, you deserve. I I I like. I do like. I, you know can why I, I like. Can I borrow you? one of yours? <laughs> I don't you have. Got <laughs> you've got all your accolades. Who's the other? What's that picture of over there? That's my dad. He passed away about a year and a half ago. Yeah. All right, Peter. Listen, <laughs> this this I I just got to say this about Peter. This you know I say this off the cuff, and I don't I don't have this on a piece of paper, but I will say that we had. This was like the coolest conversation as far as like two guys that never met that he's been doing the same thing I've been doing long, 10 years longer than I've been doing, 40 years, 30 years, never met because I don't remember and I think he, he, he would have remembered. Oh, of course it was you. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> of course. But we, we got along like we brothers. That's always beautiful in uh, here. So anyway, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you for this. It was great. It was a good time. Yeah. Oh, and, and then your wife will become She'll in be September. Here, yeah, we'll, we'll, be here we'll in September. Yeah. We'll get his wife in here. I can't wait to talk to her. State of mind. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile.